In the world of medical coding, we are used to change, but being in a pandemic has accelerated change at a much higher rate. In this video, let's discuss another code introduced as a result of COVID-19, a code for an antiviral medication. Hey there, and welcome. If you are new here, you don't know me yet. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. And on this channel, I provide you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified, marketable medical coder as a result of my straightforward strategies, tips, an optimistic approach to education and learning, I've served hundreds of students and helped them transform to become certified medical coders who have developed dynamic careers in the business of healthcare and are valuable resources in their own right. Consider subscribing to my channel to get the latest and greatest information and tips you need to become a certified marketable medical coder. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications of my weekly videos. The National Institutes of Health COVID-19 Treatment Guidelines Panel, also known as the panel, recently released a statement regarding therapies for the COVID-19 Omicron variant. As a result of the statement, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, created a HCPCS code. Before we get to the code, let's talk a little bit about the therapy. Have you heard of remdesivir? Intravenous remdesivir is approved by the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, for the treatment of COVID-19 in hospitalized adult and pediatric patients age greater than or equal to 12 years and weighing greater than or equal to 40 kilograms. It is also available through an FDA emergency use authorization for the treatment of COVID-19 in hospitalized pediatric patients weighing 3.5 kilograms to less than 40 kilograms or aged less than 12 years and weighing greater than or equal to 3.5 kilograms. Remdesivir should be administered in a hospital or health care setting that can provide a similar level of care to an inpatient, hospital inpatient. Remdesivir has also been studied in outpatients with mild to moderate COVID-19 who are at risk of developing severe disease. The Pine Tree trial showed that three consecutive days of IV remdesivir resulted in an 87% relative reduction in the risk of hospitalization or death compared to a placebo. Remdesivir is expected to be active against the Omicron variant of concern or VOC, although in vitro and in vivo data are currently limited. Because remdesivir requires IV infusion for three consecutive days, there may be logistical constraints to administering remdesivir in many settings. Remdesivir is currently approved by the FDA for use in hospitalized individuals and outpatient treatment would be an off-label indication. It should be noted that a number of factors affect the selection of the best treatment option for a specific patient. These factors include, but are not limited to, the clinical efficacy of the treatment option, the availability of the treatment option, the feasibility of administering parenteral medications such as remdesivir, the potential for significant drug-drug interactions, and the regional prevalence of the Omicron VOC. All anti-SARS-CoV-2 therapeutics, which were evaluated initially in unvaccinated individuals, provide the greatest benefit for non-hospitalized patients who have risk factors for progression to severe COVID-19. The risk of progression are significantly higher for those who have not been vaccinated or for those who have been vaccinated but are not expected to mount an adequate 
immune response to the vaccine. Patient triage is required when logistical or supply constraints make it impossible to provide available therapy to all eligible patients. CMS created a HCPCS code J0248 for Veclary Remdesivir antiviral medication when administered in an outpatient setting. This code is available for use by all payers and is effective for days of service on or after December 23rd, 2021. The long descriptor is J0248 injection remdesivir one milligram. Now keep in mind, Medicare administrative contractors or MACs determine Medicare coverage when there's no national coverage determination, including in cases when providers use FDA approved drugs for indications other than what is on the approved label like using the drug for outpatient treatment. The MAX consider the major drug compendia, authoritative medical literature, and accepted standards of medical practice to determine medical necessity when considering coverage. Therefore, the MAX will determine Medicare coverage for HCPCS code J0248 for Veclury Remdesivir when you administer it in an outpatient setting. In most cases, your patient's yearly Part B deductible and 20% coinsurance will apply when you administer remdesivir. You have learned about an antiviral medication remdesivir. You have also learned that it has been approved for outpatient use against treatment of the COVID-19 Omicron variant that is effective for dates of service on or after December 23rd, 2021. Questions of the day. Have you been keeping up with all of this information? And a better question is, how do you keep up with these updates and changes? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. My final thoughts. I know these changes and updates seem to be coming at us weekly, if not daily, but it is important to stay on top of all of these things. Yes, all of the things. Prayerfully, someone on your teams have been tasked with staying abreast of what's going on. And at a minimum, you can always look for me to provide you with the latest information. So stay connected and stay tuned. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. Providing you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder. And if you are interested in more information on these tips and others, on how to become a certified marketable medical coder? Well then check out these videos and check this out. Are you interested in medical coding but not sure where to start and scared of wasting time and resources? Let me help you with the right steps to become a certified marketable medical coder. Learn more at bit.ly slash five steps coder. If you liked the video, don't forget to let me know by hitting the thumbs up, hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. So you are informed every week when I upload new content. I love hearing from you. So let me know you were here by asking a question, providing a comment, or stopping by just to say hi. You can also give me a little love by sharing this video on your social media platforms. Remember to tag me in your video share at prncodingedu. Let's stay connected and connect others so that we can provide everybody with this great information. <laughs> if you want to learn more about the wonderful world of health information, medical coding, and or compliance, then watch one of these videos. And remember, be safe, be kind, and don't wish for it, work for it. Until next time, take care and thanks so much for watching.